Okay, so you have page uh, 1092 in the, uh, mm -hmm. this, okay. Okay, so this book that I have is the Chavetz Chaim. You heard of the Chavetz Chaim? Okay, so Chavetz Chaim passed away before World War II. He was the uh, top uh, rabbi in, in the world, in, in Europe. He wasn't voted in, which is very interesting, because in Israel you have these elections, who's going to be the chief? He was uh, elected out of uh, the population because he was known to be the greatest tzaddik. And that's how it's always been in the Jewish world, you know, for, for generations. Um, an interesting thing, he's called the Chavetz Chaim. Do you know what his real name is? Chaim. Ah, you see, that's, people think that, okay. So, really, his name was Yisrael Meir Kagan. That was his real name. Why does everybody know him as the Chavaz Chaim? It's an interesting question. You know, why don't you just call him Rebbe Yisrael Meir Kagan? Kagan in, is Cohen, actually. So, just uh, an interesting idea that in the Jewish world, if you write a book, and you're not at the level of the book, nobody's going to read it. The book and the person are the same. They're on the same level. So, one of the great works that the uh, Chavetz Chaim wrote was a book on guarding your tongue. That's what they call it in English, guard your tongue. They have it translated in many languages. And at the beginning of the book, it has all of these... Um, chapters, pages after pages of negative and positive mitzvahs that a person could be uh, going over, sinning, if you want to call the word sinning, um, if uh, he doesn't watch what he's saying. So, the idea of lush and horror, there's two aspects, just, I'm not going to deal with it so much, but if a person says something that's true and is negative, degradation to the person, even if the person doesn't end up losing money, losing his job, losing his fame, it's still called Lush and Horror. It's a prohibition of the Torah that in one speech a person can be over on many, many different counts of uh, desecrating the Torah. So, there's two parts of the book. One part of the book is explaining the negative and the positive mitzvahs a person could possibly be over. Another section of the book is um, more of a uh, musa, a uh, say, call it philosophy, self-introspection that a person uh, should do in order not to be over on uh, speaking Lush and Har. So, right from the beginning, the famous sentence that King David wrote. This sentence, uh, they, many people have written songs <laughs> about this. Uh, about this. Um, it's, a, it's in the book of Psalms, and it's a chapter in the Psalms 34. Mi ha'ish ha'chavetz chayim, who is a person that desires life? He explains to Chavetz Chaim, when he's talking about life, it means uh, eternal life, because that's the life that's forever. Mi ha'ish Chavetz Chaim, who is the person that desires life? Ohev yomim liros tov, that in this world, he's going to um, have a love of his days, and he's going to see good. Liros tov. So who is that person that's going to have the next world? Who is the person that's going to have even this world? See, uh, Judaism also puts a emphasis in the next world, but also in this world, people who keep the Torah. So God, in His kindness, gave us a Torah that will lead us to the next world, which is perpetual, nitzchi, forever. And while we're doing it here, you also have a good life. So that person is Natsur Lashon Chamera. That person is a person who guards his 
tongue from speaking evil, from speaking bad, and his lips from speaking uh, slander. So, if you wanted to take one aspect of Jewish life, and you wanted to say, who is going to get the next world? Now, how many mitzvahs we have altogether? Right. And they're split up, actually, negative and positive. How many, how many uh, positive do we have? Anybody know? 248. Mm -hmm. And 365, negative. Okay, so I want to throw out a question. Why is it that King David, in choosing one of these 613 mitzvahs, chose this, which is going to lead us to the next world, and also to have Liros Tov, to have good here in this world? So why choose this one? I mean, what? you have Tzitzis, you have Tefillin, Shabbos, all these different mitzvahs we have. So I just want to ask you, why do you think Dafka this one? Why specifically this particular concept? Guarding your tongue. Guarding your tongue. Why is that? So he explains here um, why choose this mitzvah. So that's the reason why the Chavaz Chaim quotes in, in the book of Deuteronomy here on page 1092. Uh, who wants to read it in English? You want to read it in English? Danny? 1092. It's, a big, it's the big book, right? <laughs> a good book. Okay, it's 1092. So if he, he sat on, on, on sentence 19, uh, on, on 15. Mm -hmm. Right. See, I have placed before you today the life and the good, and the death and the evil. That which I command you today, to love Hashem your God, to walk in His ways, to observe His commandments, His decrees, and His ordinances. Then you will live, and you will multiply, and Hashem your God will bless you in the land to which you come to possess it. Okay, very good. So this basically... The Chavaz Chaim quotes, we have a command to do everything, all the 613 mitzvahs. So we started out the class, why is it that uh, the Chavaz Chaim chose this particular concept of Lashon Hora, of watching your tongue, guarding your tongue, not to say, uh, negative things about other people for no purpose, that's basically a, a general definition, out of all of the other uh, 613 mitzvahs, you know, why choose this? You, you, know, you could say, well, you know, if you want the next world, you know, put on tefillin, you know, keep Shabbos. So, so Chavaz Chaim, um, in this uh, chapter, explains that And we, we, uh, I think Aaron mentioned this also, that we're around people all the time. And we're always talking. Sometimes we talk too much. <laughs> and each utterance that a person makes, each statement that a person makes in uh, speaking negatively um, is, is a sin in itself. So how many words, interesting, how many words can a person speak a minute? Did you ever think about it? How many do you think? About 200 to 250, if he's going really fast. 200, what do you say, 250? Yeah, about 250 words. Right, right. So, so, the, so they explain that every word adds up, you know. So if a person has a B session, you know, a session for like an hour, you know, dumping on this guy, you know. So, you know, it could just be enormous amount of, of, of negative uh, input in that point. And we're very careful about that, you know, we try. In the Jewish communities uh, all over the world, people go out of their way to learn. They have, this book is actually, uh, this version is, is broken down into days. So every day you, you learn a paragraph and just go through it. And what happens is, even though that might not take too much time, but if you're learning it and you spend just a minute or two on it, that focuses us there's a famous rabbi uh, in the 1800, 1800s, the Rabbi Yisrael Salanta, and um, he was once quoted as saying on this book that if it would keep him, who, you know, he was a genius, he was a great rabbi, he gave Talmudic scholar le lectures, he also gave Musa and philosophy and, and self-improvement. 
So he said, if, if I, when I re read this book, if it would keep me one time from speaking uh, uh, Lashon Hara, it was worth reading the whole book. Right? Because uh, you know, every, everything a person does in this world is counted. So, so it's important to keep in mind that what we say has an effect in the spiritual world. It's not just being a nice guy. As a matter of fact, if, you, if a person does keep um, tabs on what he's saying, he'll notice that he's going to be very popular. Why is he going to be popular? Aaron, why do you think he's going to be popular? Let's say, we're not doing mitzvahs to be popular, but why do you think a person is going to be popular if he doesn't speak Lashon and Because people can trust him. Right. Right. So in other words, when you leave the room, you don't have to be afraid. <laughs> You, know, you have your friends sitting there, and all of a sudden you, you, know, you have to go out of the room for a while, right? What are they going to say about me? You know, like, they're waiting for me to leave. You know? <laughs> and then when the next guy leaves, they dump on him also, right? But if you know that it's not going to happen, it's a tremendous uh, liberty that a person has. Uh, you know, and everybody does dumb things, you know? Everybody does a silly things. Sometimes they say something silly in a class, or or whatever, you know. And um, if it has no purpose, which most things are, are, that people talk about which are negative don't have a positive effect, so, so why say it? And, and if we think about it, you know, you know I, I, once, I once had a friend of mine who um, was American, and he married a girl from France. He didn't speak too much French. So I said, how do you deal with it? I mean, it's always good when you get married to be able to speak, you know, like easily. And great rabbis told me in the past that if you marry somebody who is from a foreign country, you should always be able to speak. But he, he justified it in saying, I have to think twice what I say to her. You see? It's very important. If you have to think twice what you say, and I guess we should always do that. If you think twice what you say, so... Say, why am I going to say this? What do I gain out of it? You know, so uh, it's funny. Okay, so I can say something that's not cutting to the next person. I think one of the problems we have today is um, in the media. They really go out of the way to try and cut down people. They have these talk shows, <laughs> and they why do they invite this guy over in order to cut him down? You know, he's a big star or he's a politician, whatever, and we're going to get him on the program and we're going to embarrass him. You know, we're, gonna, we're gonna find something that he did or what, and uh, remind him of, of something in the past, and then we're just gonna, you know. Why is it, just psychologically speaking, why is it that people are into that? You know, why? You know, this beautiful world, you have so much in the world now. Why, why, why is it that, you know, the media pushes that so much? I mean, you can have, you know, such positive impact in the world. Why, why, why do you think that, uh, you know, you, do you agree with me on, on some of these uh, talk shows that they invite people, you know, because they just want to say, and why did you, you know, what do you think of this act that you did years ago, you know? <laughs> the guy's sitting there purple, you know. I didn't know anybody knew. <laughs> so why do you think they do that? What, what is, I mean, you don't eat it, you don't dress it, you know. It's not like clothing or something. You know, why, why get involved with, uh, with negative things? Do you want to answer? Go ahead. People, first of all, what's the best way to make a person feel or for them to feel better about, about themselves? One way is, you know, okay, they do something great. But how hard is it to do something good or something great to make you feel good? The other way is very easy. Just cut the other person down. Boom. And, you know, you see that on TV and you see, oh, this person is this politician or this great person isn't that so great. It makes you feel a little bit better, even for a short period of time. And that's why, that's the popularity of it, of just, mm -hmm. you know, uh, cutting and making fun of other people. And, you know, it, it, you know part of it's entertaining. You know, it's fun to just, uh, um, you know, and on one level it's fun to just, uh, you know, make fun of other people and things like that. But, um, you know, if you're, you're a positive person, then you definitely see something negative. Most people are... Are uh, they respond more to negativity than positivity, and that's uh, laughter is such a powerful form. Uh, I think I read somewhere where it says that laughter circumvents a hundred rebukes. Just just one well placed joke circumvents any argument, 
that another person says. So, mm -hmm. so the thing is that it's so a laughter is so powerful to the person. B people enjoy just having fun, especially at another person's expense. So that's why it's something like that is because it so builds up your it, ego. It builds up your ego. Right. Even if it's at the expense of someone else's, so what? It makes you feel better because, oh, I'm not like that. That, right. that person who's a politician, maybe even in the back of your mind, is like, you know, I'm better than him. Why should I be in that position? Or right. something like that. Yeah. So. Right. I don't know if, uh, right. Especially somebody that has, uh, you know, insecurity. If you notice when you're dealing with people that people are insecure, they, I think they're more prone to, to knock other people. You know, because um, they have their own issues. <laughs> so, they have so many of their own issues. So, so if they knock other people, so it makes them, you know, like feel better. So, yeah, go ahead. Uh, can a shonara be, be truth? Right. In definition, that's what it is. It is. It is truth. Yeah. Uh, there's slander, which is Moshe's shame. Right. Like, that's slander. That's right. you're spreading lies about the person. But lashon hara is something that's bad, but it's true. Imagine, you know, like lashon hara, but lashon hara is still evil. Why? Imagine if you there's something really bad about a family member, someone that you really care about, right? They, you know, they had a horrible past, right? They're drug abuse or something like that. Would you want that information? And now they're, let's say they're at a high-ranking job, or they're they're, they're um, in a position of prominence, respect, or just the fact that they're you know your parents, and now you respect them. Would you want that information to get out to the general public or to your friends and to other family members? I mean, right? right? Of course not. Why? Why don't you want that to get out? Because. It, you know the reason, right? Of course, it, it hurts their reputation. So the, the the reason why it does so much evil is because of the fact that the the person themselves, in the other eyes of other people, it diminishes that person, right. and that's why it's so it's so powerful, but so negative. And when you're diminishing their character, you're really diminishing themselves. It's like, in a sense, you're murdering them. And every time that that piece of information goes from one person to another, to another, to another, and spreads throughout, you're killing that person over and over and over and over again. That's why Lashon Har, in a lot of cases, is worse than murder. So, so like you said, the, the Lashon Har is actually talking the truth. Talking the truth. Motzei uh, Shemra saying, you know, like, uh, bad things that are not true, mixed in. Now, normally, you, you notice in the world that, uh, you know, life is not so exciting, so you have to, uh, you have to sweeten it up a little bit, your story, <laughs> so you have to add, and not only that, but he did this, and he didn't do it at all, right? But, uh, but that's, how the, that's how the, you know, like, the, the words go around. So but but that's, that's worse, because right. now you're actually, you know, lying about the, you know, the, the whole thing. So I understand lie, I understand the truth, what if it's something subjective? Like, uh... You mean you're judging it? You're judging right, the like, situation oh, itself? Right, the bow, or this blue, yeah. or this black right. coat, you know, I didn't really like it. I I, so I'm bluish exactly today. Like, today I'm bluish. Blue, yeah, I was going to say blue, black, <laughs> and blue, So... But, you know, like, oh, I can't believe I would have Well, I'll, I'll tell you something, you know, the, he talks like about this. No, but I, I, so I'll tell you something that if you make a statement, someone said it. <laughs> right. somebody makes a statement, right, and it can be interpreted as a negative or positive, right. and then your eyes, you know, like tilt up, even if you don't say anything. Lush and horror can even be, you know, like, like an eye movement, and you're putting down the guy in front of all the other friends. It's also, it's also like you know, negativity. But if, I don't know if you can imagine this, but hopefully the religious society, you know, people that adhere to the Torah, so they're very careful about this. And um, this, it's tremendous freedom to live in that society when you know that when you get up and leave the group that they're not going to, you know, dump on you. It's, it's, I mean, it's such, a, it's such a privilege to be in such a society. As I mentioned, you know, everybody, you know, has their own thing, you know, has their own uh, mis 
Uh, I mean, I, I'm perfect, but I mean, th there are people that have problems, you know. <laughs> you know, so, um, right, so another aspect of this, which the Chavaz Chaim explains here, why choose this? If we're careful about not damaging somebody, even if it's true, so how much more so that we're not going to slug the guy? We're not going to hurt the guy physically. Or, or, or we're not going to lie about the person. If we're careful in our life that we won't even defame somebody on somebody that he did that is actually true, so all the more so, we're going to be careful not to physically hurt the person. You know, it brings a sensitivity in a relationship to people that if you're not going to say something negative about the person and, you, and you, you're constantly thinking about that, so, so then, at the end of the day, you, it's going to be out of your ballpark to, to, to actually hurt somebody. And, 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 I, and I think that that's, that's also an important aspect. In, in, uh, in Judaism, we, we, it's called the tachbula. Tachbula and Musa, in, in making ourselves uh, more perfect, is uh, having a tachbula. A tachbula means that you're doing something I'll give you, like even when I was a kid, they said, if you get angry, so, you know, like count to ten. How is that going to help you? I mean, counting to ten is not going to do it, right? But the fact that you stopped and you had time, ten seconds, to think about it, so maybe you wouldn't lash out against the other guy. So, that, in Musa, that's called a tachbula. So, if a person is careful in his interactions with people that he won't even say something that's true, which is negative about another person, so all the more so he's going to be careful about everything else, which is much more, you know, in a physical manner, or, or lying about a person. So, so that, that's sort of like David, when he wrote this, who is a person that wants life, he's talking about a person that, that's so sensitive that he won't knock a person, even if it's true. So all the more so, that's going to help us not damage somebody in, in, a, in a real way, um, in a physical way. But it's wor no, lush and hard is worse than murdering someone because right. it really is. It, because, right. okay, it's not just the fact that you can kill someone once, it's the fact that, okay, what are you doing when you're talking about a, a, a person, right? Okay, if you murder someone, you kill their body, their right. spirit still lives on. Right? right. But if you talk something negative, you're killing right. their spirit right. to the eyes of right. many, many right. different people, which is... But let me ask you a question. It's, it's, it's I, a, I know that it says... Death to that I, I realize that it says that, if you know, like, it, um, it's like you're killing person. But, I mean, in reality, if you had a choice, somebody's kind of standing in front of you, you know, this, and he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a choice. Either I'm going to speak lush and horror about you, or I'm going to kill you physically. I mean... <laughs> it just take well, more. It, depends, but, uh, it depends on the situation. It really that even depends. Because if it's a hell of a sham, right, then if it if it's a big enough hell of a sham, let's say, you know what, kill me. If it, it really is a big enough hell of a sham, if it's more right. just me personally, then yeah, okay. Yep. I guess you can say that murder is worse, I mean, in, in this life. Yes, right. it's something that I, I don't have I mean, murder is a very severe thing, you know, you, yeah, I mean, guy's okay. life, you know. But, I, I, but, it, but, we're, but we do say that. We do say that if you embarrass somebody it, publicly, if you embarrass somebody, so, you know, we, and, he, and, he, and his face turns white, it's like you killed him. You know, so it, we're, we're very sensitive about this. One of the problems that I mentioned earlier is that because of the media, we've lowered the standards so much that, you know, to, to sit around and, and just rank each other out is fun. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, so, and, and, and everybody has their cliches, what they say, you know, your mother's this, and you, your brother's this, and you do this, and you do that, and we get around, and everybody's laughing, but actually, it's, it's, it's a very negative thing. So, that's, that's one aspect that, that he brings out, is uh, number one, that uh, it brings a sensitivity to a person, that in his interrelationships with people, that if he's careful what he says, so all the more so in a physical way, you know, he's going to be very, very careful. It's going to be out of his bounds. 
Another aspect that the that the, that the Chavos Chaim uh, discusses is, um, let's say, a little bit of a uh, spiritual or, or Kabbalistic idea that um, there's, a, there's a statement I'll quote, which um, is actually uh, Gemara Shabbos. The Gemara Shabbos on, on, on page uh, Kuf Nun Aleph says, Kol Merachim Arbrios, all people who have Rachmanus, that's an English word already, isn't it? <laughs> Rachmanus means that he's uh, kind. Any person who's kind to, 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 uh, to others, Merachim Alav Al Minashamayim. So he's going to, up in heaven, they're going to have Rachmanus on him here. So how we act, we get it back from God. That's basically the idea. And Kol Hamavia Al Mirosav, the Gemara goes on and says, all people who um, are not particular about themselves, when, when, when other people are, are, are nasty to them, whatever, they don't lash out, which is a very hard thing. <laughs> so Mavin Al Kol Peshav. So then it's like his slate is clean. If you're a guy that's getting, you know, uh, embarrassed by other people and, and, and you just, you know, keep you cool and, and uh, have faith. So that, that erases all of, you, uh, all of your slate, all of your sins that you have. This is a piece of Gomorrah that's in Gomorrah Shabbos. And um, it's actually, besides in, in the Talmud, it's also written in, in the Zohar, uh, the same idea that what we do here activates how it happens in the next world. You know, sometimes you, you, you're, you're going through life and you say, well, you know, all these people, they're so nasty to me and they're having all these problems and everything. So it could be that we're the source of that, according to this idea that the, the Gemara has. How is that? How are we the source of people dumping on us or, or, or cheating us or anything like that? Because what we do here activates how heaven interacts with us. So it could be that if I took notice of how I'm interacting and how I'm treating other people. So um, that's how my life would unfold in, 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 in a better way. I, I noticed this actually, you know, in, in business, they probably talk about this in real estate. When you interrelate with somebody with a smile and you're very big yeah. and you come with a big car. So what happens? The guy that you're showing this house is also very big. Because you, you, you're, you're lavishing him with, the, with your smile and, you, and your big gold ring and, and your, your fancy car, right? They're, they're real estate agents. I heard that the, every year they have to buy a new car because they just have to be flashing their wealth. So what happens? Yeah. You are interacting with this person in a high level and, and, and this guy's going to you know, feel elated and he's going to pay a million dollars for this house perhaps, that you're trying to sell. If you come along, it, 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 your interrelations with people activate how they interact with you also. So this is the idea also that um, if we, Chavaz Chaim is bringing this point, that if we're careful in how we interact with other people and uh, we don't speak nasty about other people, so that activates the heaven and, and God will, will also act, uh, treat us hopefully in that same way. So, so therefore, that's another aspect that a person that wants mi ha'isha chavetz chaim, who is a person that wants an everlasting life in the next world, so ohev yomim liros tov, that he's going to have good days here. Why? Because in his interaction with other people, he's activating the spiritual world that's going to treat him the way that he's treating others. Right. So this is actually the, in the Hasidic world also, there's a, there's a sentence in, in Tehillim that says, Hashem Tzilcha, that this is not the Chavaz <laughs> I'm just bringing this on the side. But God is your shadow. What does it mean God is your shadow? So when you lift up your arm, so you see the shadow, it goes bigger, it gets smaller. So that's the idea that when we activate uh, certain qualities, hopefully good things, so that reciprocates to us and how you know we we uh, we get the bl uh, blessing from God. 
So that's how we could have a person who wants an ev everlasting life in the next world. Mio Yishel Chavetz Chaim, a person who wants, a, uh, desires um, a uh, spiritual world. So he actually is going to have good days here because that's the input that he's putting into the world, which I, I think many people don't realize. You know, we have it's this amazing idea that you know, many people think, well, I'm just going to grab and however I can get it, as long as I get away with it, so it's all good, you know. <laughs> and I could be more popular, how am I going to be more popular, how am I going to get more money, so as long as I get away with it and, and, and don't get arrested, you know, so, so it's fine. But in, in, in our world, it's totally different. In our world, it's, it's, it's a different standard. And we have this key, that, that the key to happiness, the key to success, that we're going to get blessing from Hashem, in keeping this in mind, that how we act, so we activate the heavenly worlds, and hopefully that will be a, a result to us also. But um, I, I, as I said before, the world doesn't realize this. You know, I don't think you know, the masses, uh, how people interact and how, how they, uh, they find their entertainment and everything else is, is a totally different realm, I think. I mean, do you see this? <laughs> right. Right. So, so that's basically what I wanted to say today. So let me just re re revamp this a little bit for myself, for us. That first of all, uh, the Chavetz Chaim, there's one point that, uh, that some of you missed. The reason why Rabbi Yisrael Meir Kagan is called the Chavetz Chaim is because he and his book are the same. This is mentioned at the beginning of the, that if a person writes a book in Judaism, if he's not holding by it himself, it doesn't reflect himself. So then, nobody's going to read it. Uh, which is not true in, 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 in the scholastic world. You know, you, somebody can read a, write a very you know, lofty uh, idea about life and everything, and, and he's not expected to, to live by that. It's just, you know, it's philosophy. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's his uh, way of... Uh, you know, uh, re relating his thoughts. But in Judaism, th the thoughts and the person have to mesh together. Um, we discussed this uh, sentence, famous sentence that uh, David writes about who is a person that wants life. He's going to have, uh, he's going to love his days, he's going to have good days, and he's also going to see good. And how is that? By guarding his tongue. Right? And then we discussed you know, the ideas of um, sensitivity to other people, and if we're sensitive to other people, so, so therefore, certainly we're not going to physically damage them. Uh, in a Kabbalistic aspect, we discussed also that, that how we interact with other people and how we, inter uh, that, that causes spiritual vibes, forces, that, uh, that react in the end in that God will interact with us the way that we act with others. And um, another point that we brought out is why is it that, that David mentioned this particular mitzvah? Is because it's, a, it's something that we're always doing, we're always talking. Something I didn't discuss, I actually, I, I studied in the yeshiva called Chavetz Chaim. <laughs> So, so uh, the rabbis in previous generations who lived with the Chavetz Chaim in, in, in Europe, so you would think that a person who is writing this book, who's very careful about what he say, is a very quiet person. But it's not true. The Chavetz Chaim was a very friendly person. He was always talking, but he was saying the right thing. <laughs> you see, that's it. You don't have to walk around like a... Like a like a zombie saying, oh, I can't say anything, you know, maybe this is going to damage that. But uh, he, he actually was, was a very friendly person, and, and he spoke a lot, but what he spoke was good, you know. So, so we have to train ourselves to be positive and, and also, you know, like interact with people in a positive way. And another point that, that we mentioned is that you'll become very popular in, in, in being a person that... that can be trusted uh, 
that's one point. Another point also that if, when we live in that society, which is basically a Jewish society, people are learning this book uh, constantly. It's one of the most popular books. That, uh, and and there, are, there are lectures about it, and there are, um, there's internet lectures about it. So you can live in a society and have the freedom of knowing that people are not going to gossip about us. Even though that we did dumb things, <laughs> which we all, everybody has the, the problems, but um, we're going to be careful in what we say in, in that society, and, and just like we're careful, the other people are careful about it. And it's, and it's a reality. It's totally you know, amazing to live in a society like that. It could be one of the reasons why people have so many problems in society. So many people are seeing psychiatrists and everything because he's talking about me. He's, what he's going to say about me? You know, right? But if you live in a society, a Jewish society, with people who are Torah, I, when I say religious society, I'm talking about you know, not people that are just um, you know, davening and keeping traditions you know, here and there. I'm talking about people that are actively learning. They're, 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 they're living a Torah life. So that's one of the wonderful things about being part of this world is that um, you know, basically you have a freedom of thought and you don't have to always be worried about what he's going to say, what he said, because I said this about it and I did this or that. We just say no, nobody's going to say anything about it. You know? it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful society and I, and I see it. You know, I see it you know, in my communities and hopefully all over the world it's, it's that way. So that's actually what the Chavaz Chaim is saying, that you're going to have Liros Tov. You're going to have good days in this world. You're going to have good days in the next world. You're going to have a spiritual, um, a, a spiritual life that's going to be, hopefully, uh, a, an amazing uh, pleasure. And in this world also, it's going to lead us to, to good. So that was my message for the day. So, Mr. Shem, uh, if it keeps us, like I said, Rabbi Yisrael Salanta, who read the whole book, famous rabbi, keeps us from, from speaking Lashon Hara once, it's, it's worth reading the whole book. <laughs> Hopefully it'll keep us much more, but uh, that's it. We have Mincha now. <laughs>